And with the voices of Gary Payton, Mayor McGinn, and others, we are underway. It's our NBA Seattle NHL multi-purpose arena proposal roundtable. It commences right now, seven days ago. We were weighing, uh, lying here in wait of anticipation to try to have the announcement that there was an arena proposal before us. A lot of excitement. Seven days have passed, and actually there's been a lot of news that has taken place since then. Got a great panel here. I'll mention right now Chris Van Dyke, Citizens for More Important Things, will join us via phone at the bottom of the hour. But I'm going to go around the horn and introduce our group. Jason Reed from Sonicsgate, welcome. How are you? Hey, doing good. Good to have you here. Got the great T-shirt going on. I see Sabrowski's wearing the same thing in there today. Yep. RT, a longtime Seattle sports columnist, uh, formerly the PI now of Sports Press Northwest here. Thanks for coming Reeds, by. Yes, thrilled beyond measure. Uh, we've got uh, our man Brian Robinson. So basically founded Save Our Sonics, has now moved on, and now it's arenasolutions.org, different group, same purpose. Let's get something done. They co-founded. Everybody in Save Our Sonics deserves lots of credit. Uh, Adam Brown, also a Sonics Gate. Terrific documentary. Thanks for coming by. Thanks for having us. And from Seattle's number one hip-hop station, <laughs> right down the hall. I, I heard it's down the hall. I personally have never been in the studio outside of when I go in there to see if they got food left over or something <laughs> like that. It's our man from the morning show, Eddie Francis. And this has been a huge topic, I know. I think people sometimes think it's just a sports topic. Far from that. No, it's a city topic. And I think um, at Q Radio, we've done our best to support the Sonics throughout the years. And like you guys, we're doing the best we can to make sure we get a team back. Let's go through the list of, uh, of what's happened in the last seven days. Brian, I'll start with you. Uh, a lot of euphoria, uh, a lot of excitement. Seven days ago when that announcement was made, I know you had been in on some of the discussions, at least kind of knew some of the behind-the-scenes uh, things that were taking place. You knew that there was something coming as far as an announcement. But take me back seven days ago. How significant was last Thursday? Well, I think it was very significant because when these things stay quiet, when nobody's talking about them, they're not public, uh, there's a natural tendency that the reason they're not public is people don't want to go on record because they're skeptical. And this is a really, really hard thing to put together with multiple moving parts. And now you've got a bunch of people on record. You know, you've got Mayor Mike McGinn. You've got this ownership group led by Chris Hansen. You've got Dow Constantine that they've said they want to do this. And when they hit adversity, you know, they're going to be on record as, as either giving up and failing or powering through it. So the fact that it's gone public and people are actually talking about it and the way the city received it, it's a positive thing. You haven't heard really any complaints about the garbage before. I think it was a great day. Art, you've uh, seen a lot of news conferences in this town, more than most. Uh, that was a different type of news conference. It was more pep rally than news conference. It was. There was a lot of cheerleading going on, and I understand absolutely the emotion. And I also got a glimpse of how much work went on behind the scenes after talking to people. After the conference, I made phone calls and understood a little better how the deal was going to go. The... This Seattle is doing its part. The problem comes with the NBA and the NHL, as it always has. And my biggest lament about all of this is that Seattle is being held in the same position uh, with the NBA as Los Angeles is with the NFL. They want things, uh, they want to keep this market empty for a while, not for a long time, but for a while to do exactly what happened yesterday in Sacramento. Scare the Maloofs into ponying up some money. And getting somebody to help along the way, and AEG right. in this case as yeah, well. Yeah, AEG's in there, and but somebody had to scare them, and Seattle did the job for them. We're going to spend a lot of the next segment talking about where we are a week later, and Art just kind of teased that a little bit and scratched the surface because it, it feels like whereas seven days ago we were in the midst of, of taking this huge step forward. And, I mean, I joked about it earlier, people looking at their visa statement saying, What's my limit? Can I can I get <laughs> tickets tomorrow? Am, am I is that is it a possibility? And obviously, seven days later, things have maybe or maybe not changed. And we'll get everybody's thoughts on that in a second. Initial thoughts. We'll continue to go around the horn. Jason, you guys, when you put together Sonic Skate, I, I know that there was it was probably multiple reasons. Therapeutic in a sense, right? right. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Very therapeutic. Uh, at the same time, much like Brian and and the whole group with Save Our Sonics and others, and I remember Brian telling me this from day one. It, the most important thing is to keep everything at the forefront and make sure that we don't forget and don't don't ever let it just everything go away. Let's you know, there's a lot of people that hate David Stern and hate the NBA. At least they allege that. But the biggest thing is is make sure everything's up at the front of the, of the table. You guys portrayed what happened in such a great way with Sonic Skate, such a, an award winning documentary. But you did that for for that reason, the therapeutic reason for a, a fan as well. But also, I'm sure to have a day like last Thursday, correct, where you could actually say, hey. 
maybe we're making progress again. Yeah, I mean, the from the first interview I ever did about Sonicsgate, it was all about we made this to preserve the history, to give everybody an opportunity to understand what happened and to heal from all the pain and suffering we went through. But ultimately, it was to bring the NBA back to Seattle and to make sure the story doesn't get forgotten and to make sure people understood what happened so this time around we can do things right. And as Art said, that press conference is Seattle is doing its part. They're doing everything that the NBA wants us to do right now in terms of building, you know, coming up with a concrete plan to build an arena. So all the work that we've done trying to make sure the story doesn't go away, continuing to try to create stories or make a big deal, showing up at basketball games, sitting courtside behind the Thunder bench in our green and gold, making sure that the nation and this region stays excited about basketball while we're waiting for this team to come back. Adam? Right, and, and you know, the first thing that an ownership group needs to see to step forward like they did last week is that there still are fans here and that people will support the NBA product. And, you know, despite sort of the, the toxic, you know, feelings of the way things went down before, we've always maintained that we are huge NBA fans. This is a basketball market. It's a basketball city. And when a team does come back here, we wanted to make sure that uh, people know that there is support. So, uh, you know, we just wanted to give Sonics fans a place to continue being Sonics fans while this uh, p- period is, uh, you know, where there's no team currently. During the hiatus. Yeah, during the uh, – exactly, like the hiatus. Eddie? Mm-hmm. And for me, it was the first cool moment we've had in a long time. Yes. We've always, we all had this disdain for basketball for such a long time, even as the Sonics were about to leave while they were still playing here. The writing was on the wall for most of us. We knew they were going to leave. And it started this feeling like, for me personally, I stopped watching basketball, professional basketball, as in uh, as intensely as I used to. Right. So the news came out last week, and there was things bubbling even before that. I started watching the NBA again, and there was interest. And you see, when you went to other sporting events, you've seen a lot of the green and gold bringing – being brought back out, and you're like, okay, we're having a moment. People are finally getting behind this, the politicians, the people, the basketball fans. And it was the first basketball, professional basketball moment we've had in this city in a really long time. Goodness knows we need a positive moment mm-hmm. sometimes in sports here. Puck, you were gone, and I, I, just, I, I want to go back and just take me back seven days ago. I mean, we knew that something was bubbling on the surface. What was your initial thought? Well, initial thought, I think a lot of what a lot of guys have pointed out is excitement. I mean, excitement of the fact that we're talking about this again, and I think what Art – touched on initially how detailed I think the plans were when they and then they finally came out that there was actually some thought there was some there was some some positive dialogue going on behind the scenes of trying to put this together and I think that's very positive there is another part of me again to, to piggyback on what art said that that feels slightly used in this case but I think I went into this process kind of expecting that in a way in a small way kind of expecting that knowing that maybe it wouldn't be that these two franches by eventually down the road, that there will be something. The, the fact is that the city and the county are having discussions about a new arena. That, that's, that's only a positive thing. All right, well, we'll do this. We'll take a quick break for traffic. We're going to come back. We're going to talk about that. Art kind of scratched the surface. Uh, there's probably, Eddie, like you said, it was we're feeling really good seven days ago. Seven days later, I think there might be a little bit feeling of, of just that. Are we being used? Is it? Have we taken steps backwards? Not we, but the NBA and the NHL, the Coyotes. The Hornets, the Kings all look like maybe in the last seven days things have moved forward to keeping those teams in those arenas and those cities. We'll talk about where we are. Is it truly going backwards as opposed to forwards? We'll get everybody's thoughts on that. Chris Van Dyke, bottom of the hour, citizens for more important things. Got a couple emails I'm going to fire off at guys as well. There are the naysayers out there, mm. There are, and they're coming out of the woodwork. I don't know how much you hear them on Cube. We don't hear them as much, but I've definitely been reading a lot of blogs and articles, and you see them. You and see them. They're coming out. They're they're see they they leave you guys alone in the morning. They come after <laughs> us in the afternoon. That's what they do here at KJR. So we'll hear from those guys as well. All of that's coming up next.